Yes. <laughs> well, Amen. Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Shalom. Oh, you speak Hebrew. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> you can take a seat. Yeshua, boy. Yeshua. 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 Amen. That's just close to my heart. Amen. You know, Amen. Um, I didn't know Yeshua was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> when I grew up, I thought he was, I heard he was born Jewish. I kind of, we all knew he was born. But we thought he converted to Catholicism. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we understood, because we thought, you know, um, that's how we grew up. Yes, yes, yes. We, we just didn't think he would remain Jewish. Mm. And we didn't know that. That he said, I didn't come to take away the Torah, the law, oh and the Naveen, the prophets. Yeah. I came to fulfill them, yes. to make them more full, to yes. complete them. Yes. Amen. He is the completion yes. of what the prophets and the Torah spoke about. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to share a little bit today. Amen. Let's... Um, Let's give it to Adonai, to the Lord. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father, our King. I just thank you, Lord God, for this temple here. This sanctuary, Lord God, where you are revered and magnified. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is in this place. The God of my forefathers, Lord. Amen. Who, uh, who brought the light to the nations, to the Gentiles, Lord God. And I just thank you for... You haven't abandoned Israel, Lord God, but you have redeemed them, Lord, and you have redeemed the nations through the light of the world, or Ha'olam. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua, for you are the light of the world. Come into the world to bring light to all men. And so I thank you, Father. Use me, use your servant, Lord God, to, to bring forth your word tonight. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Lord. All God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand. Well, we are living in incredible days. Now, I'm not into big signs and, you know, uh, wonders and trying to, you know, foretell the future if it's not in the scriptures necessarily. But we are living in really incredible times. And we are living in the time of the blood moons. Yes, yes. We are right now in the time of the tetrad. These are tetrad or four blood moons in a period of two years. And I'm gonna to touch on that, why I think it's really significant for us Amen. today. And and what's the significant thing today is that the blood moons fall on the Jewish feasts. <laughs> Coincidence? No, 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 I don't think so. And if it wasn't for falling on these feasts, I wouldn't give it that much attention. But since I know something about the feasts, the biblical feasts of Israel, yes. I think we should touch on it. Yes. 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 And so, I'm going to start with giving a little knowledge of the feasts. You know, the biblical feasts were given to us as a reminder that when God's people entered Israel, the promised land, and settled there, they would remember from where they came, where they got to, and who brought them there. Amen. And so God instituted holy days, feasts, so that we cease from our own toil and preoccupations with survival and remember Him Amen. who is our sustainer, our rock, and our deliverer. Amen. Okay? And so each appointed time were to be observed by Israel. And they had certain enactments and ceremonies to bring home the message using all five senses. The chronology of all the appointed times and feasts perfectly fit God's plan of salvation through the Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. Okay, like I said before, Yeshua, and says in Matthew 5, 17, Yeshua said, I did not come to replace the Torah. And then Paul said in Colossians 2, 17, 
The Torah, that's the first five books of Moses, the law, was a type and a shadow of greater things to come. But the substance, the fulfillment, is of the Messiah. He fulfills all the appointed times and feasts and the Torah. You know, the word for appointed times, moed in Hebrew, it, um, it means an appointed time, a set time. Each feast, like it's like a, a dress rehearsal mm -hmm. that offers a significant glimpse of God's prophetic plan of salvation. And so, God said to the children of Israel, before you enter the promised land, I want you to remember, to remember what I did for you. Celebrate these feasts to remember. And so, this is what he said. In Leviticus chapter 23, begins the instructions yes, yes. for the feasts. God said, Speak to the sons of Israel, Moses, in verse 2, and say to them, The Lord's Moed, Moedim, the appointed times, you shall proclaim as holy convocations. My appointed times are these. These are the appointed times of the Lord, holy convocations, and you shall proclaim them at the times appointed for them. Right? In the first month, on the 14th day, at twilight, twilight means when the sun goes down. Do you know that a day, a Hebrew day, it says in the evening yes, and sir. the morning, yes, right? Sir. Yes, well, the yes. day starts in the yes. evening. Yes, sir. At sundown. Yes, sir. Start in the morning. Yes. And that's when our celebrations start. Yes. Amen. It says on the first month in verse 5, on the 14th day of the month, that's around March, April, the first month of the Hebrew year. The, first, the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Pesach. That means Hebrew for Passover. That's passing over. Okay? What happened on the Passover? Well, the children of Israel were in Egypt. Slaves. God was calling them out of slavery. And he said to them, Now you're going to be saved by the blood of a lamb. So what I want you to do in order to exercise faith. That's what God wants from us. He gives the grace, the free, unmerited favor. But we have to incorporate the faith Amen. to receive it. Yes. Yes. What were they to do to incorporate their faith? Take the blood of a lamb and put it on the doorposts of their houses by faith. Because they couldn't understand why they had to do that. And they all did that. Even some of the Egyptians that heard about it, mm -hmm. right? Amen. they had faith too. Because it says that a multitude went out with the Hebrews. And so those who applied the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts were saved. Amen. And what does that point to the picture? The prophetic fulfillment. I came to fulfill Yeshua's sin. What did John say? Behold, the Lamb of God who yes. takes away the sins of the world. Yes. He fulfills the Passover. Amen. And then what were they to do, it says? Well, of course, we have to apply the blood of the Lamb on the doorposts of our hearts. Amen. Yeshua, <laughs> He came to fulfill that. Yeah. And so is the doorposts of our hearts. That's what He has done for us. Hallelujah. And so, when we do the communion, what did he do at the communion? That was his Passover supper. We yes. call it a Seder, yes. which we do yearly. I think I've done one for Pastor Pratt. Yes. And uh, we've done. What is that all about? The cup. Amen. There it is. Yes. It's, the, it's the symbol of the blood on the doorposts of the houses. Yes. And on his last Seder, his last Passover on this earth, picked up the third of the four cups yes. Amen. Yes. of wine, of the fruit of the vine. Mm -hmm. And he 
He said, this is the new covenant. The blood of the new covenant. Amen. Yes. In my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. So just like they did the blood on the doorpost, to remember, God uses our senses. He wants us to taste, to hear, to feel. That's when we remember. Isn't it beautiful, the communion? Amen. Yes, it is. I love it. Amen. And so he said, whenever you come together and you take, partake of my blood, yes. remember what I did for you. Amen. I saved you out of Israel from the slavery of physical slavery, but with my blood I'm saving you Hallelujah. into spiritual Hallelujah. life from spiritual slavery. So, Amen. We love the cup. Yes. Amen. Glory. Yes. Then it says in verse 6, Then on the 15th day, that's the day after Passover, on the same month there is to be the Matzot, the Feast of Matzot, unleavened bread to the Lord. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Okay. What was that unleavened bread that we eat on, on Passover? It's called matzah. That's why it's called the Feast of Matzah. It's the matzah. Unleavened bread. Teach, teach. Why do we use unleavened, not regular bread? Who was without leaven? Yeshua. Yeshua. Because leaven, the Bible, represents sin. That's right. And he's the only one without sin. Amen. You know what? When I was growing up, before I knew Yeshua, in my family every year, we'd celebrate the Passover and we'd use the matzah and the wine. Amen. And, you know, we go through the story of Passover, just like I was saying, you know, how God we delivered us from slavery and the blood of the lamb and the, when the blood with the lamb, I forgot to mention that, but probably you know that. Why were they saved by the blood of the lamb? Because when the angel of death saw the blood, yeah. he passed yeah. over that house. Exactly. And the people were saved. The firstborn were saved. That's right. And so when when we apply the blood to our hearts, God sees our faith. Now, they were told, I was telling you that I grew up eating matzah, and I didn't know why. We don't really know why we use unleavened bread. The Bible says they didn't have time for their leaven to grow in, in the Egypt. Because they had to leave in a hurry, right? So they took their dough the way it was and just baked it in the desert sun. No leaven. Because you need leaven to make it grow. And so, but what is the fulfillment of that? What did he do? On that night, he broke bread. This is what he did. Because Amen. Glory. And he said, this is my body, yeah. which is broken for you. Yeah. It is his body because it is without leaven, Amen. which represents sin. Amen. And so he said, take and eat this in remembrance of me. Amen. And so now, when I became a believer in Yeshua, I love the Passover seders because it has so much meaning now. Yes, yes. When I was a kid, I couldn't wait for it to be over so I could eat supper. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, because we have to go through this long little booklet that we, we, we teach about the story of Egypt and, and, and Israel. But now it's just so much more. We partake of the cup, which is the blood. And we partake of his body, broken for us. And we eat it. And we pass it to each other and share it. As we share the body and blood of Yeshua. It's so meaningful. Amen. And so, Amen. that is the Passover Seder. But then, there was another feast. The next feast comes the day after the Passover Sabbath. Now, it's not a big deal made in the synagogues or, or in the churches. It's called the Feast of First Fruits. And that's in verse 9, where it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moshe, Moses saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land which I am going to give to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring in the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord for you to be accepted on the day after the Passover Sabbath. 
the priest shall wave it. And so, what did the priest do? He would take the first offering of the harvest. It was a sheaf. They didn't bake it into bread. They had to bring a sheaf. It was usually a barley, a barley sheaf from the barley harvest. That was the harvest of that time of the Passover. It's the barley harvest. And so they bring it. Every offer, every worshiper would come to the priest and give the priests their sheaves. And what would the priest do? Make a wave offering. Amen. Wave it up and down. That's the direction of life. What does that say? How does Yeshua fulfill that? Well, what happened to Yeshua the day after Passover? He died. The waving down symbolizes his death. Amen. Right? And he was, you know why? It was a sheave. It wasn't baked into bread. Because what do you need to bake bread? You need to use leaven. He was without leaven, without sin. That's why it was a sheep. So the symbol of waving down is his death. But then three days later, oh, what happened? Amen. He rose. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the wave. And that's the wave offering of the priest for the people of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. He fulfills them all, brothers. Yes, yes. He Amen. is the fulfillment. Hallelujah. That's right. And then, 50 days later, mm -hmm. it was another celebration. It was Shavuot, which in Hebrew means the sevens, the feast of the seven sevens, which is 49, and then the 50th day is Pentecost. Where this Pentecost comes from seven. Well, five, actually. Pentecost is five. It's the 50th year, but it's after the seven times seven, 49. Plus one. 50th year is the seven. So 50 days later came the next harvest, the summer harvest, the wheat harvest called Shavuot. Now, the offerers were to bring the first fruits of the summer harvest before the Lord. But this time, it was baked into two loaves of bread. Amen. That's right, made with leaven, right? And so, 50 days after the resurrection of Yeshua, the first fruits came. He was the first fruits from the dead. Amen. Right? Amen. But then it says his disciples were the first fruits of the church. Amen. They were the first ones Amen. to receive the infilling Amen. of the Amen. Holy Spirit Amen. on the day of Pentecost. So at the feast of first fruits, there was a wave offering also. It was, well, actually, there were two loaves this time. Amen. What does they represent? The church. Yes. Now are we, we're still sin sinners. And so it's baked with leaven. We're sinners but saved by grace. Amen. Amen. We still need Amen. God's forgiveness. Amen. Yes. Okay, let's not forget that, you know, we, we haven't reached that place yet where we're perfect. So we need to remember that we need the Lord and whenever we do sin, we have an advocate. Yeah. With Amen. God, the Messiah. Thank you, Lord. And so we have that forgiveness. And so, now why two? What was the church made up? Just Jewish people? Jew and Gentile. Yeah, Jew and Gentile. Yeah, that's, that's right. One in the Messiah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> you know, I came to the Lord through my Gentile brothers. I was a Jewish hippie <laughs> in the 70s. Remember the, yeah. the 70s, the Jesus movement, and of course the hippie movement? Yeah. And I was searching for my roots. I knew I was Jewish, but just somehow I didn't feel fulfilled. Amen. And so I went on a trip to find myself. Remember? <laughs> Looking for ourselves. And so I went back to Israel. See, I came from Israel originally. Um, you know, the Jewish people in 70 AD, with the second exile, were dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth. The first exile in 586 BC, BC was in Babylon, right? For 70, 70 years. years. But then the next exile was no. throughout the four corners of the earth. Yeah. My parents ended up in Romania oh. and their ancestors. My wife, oh. my wife accompanied me to, uh, just thank my wife for accompanying me to this. Uh, <laughs> Her name is Kaya. Kaya in Hebrew means life. 
Amen. Amen. Life to life to life. Yeah. 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 So, uh, it means life. Hanan is my name. That means grace. Amen. 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 So Praise like the Lord. Sarah, she is the grace in my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, her ancestors ended up in Turkey. Oh, that's right. So she was born in Turkey. And my parents were born in Romania. But after the war, the Holocaust, which Romania, many died, they, they escaped. They heard that Israel was going to become a state again. It was going to be a, a home again for the Jewish people. And so they escaped and they made their way to Israel. They had to walk because they didn't have any passports. They escaped. And I was born on the way. I was born in Italy. When they were waiting to catch a boat to bring them to Israel. That's right. It was all under cover because it was 1948. It was 1947. And so they had to wait in Italy. And I didn't have a birth certificate because we had false names. We didn't have real passwords, you know. And so, so I'm not here. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Thank God. But when we, when we did get to Israel, I was, just after I was born, I got my Israeli passport, so I'm here. And uh, so we, um, we lived five years in, in Israel, and then we moved to the new promised land, Canada. <laughs> That's where I grew up, in Canada. That's where my parents thought. No. They loved Israel, but uh, it was it was hard. You had to really drench the the, the, the swamps in those days, and really you know work work the land because it was left desolate for two thousand years. And so, my so when I grew up, I went back to Israel as a, you know looking for my roots, and it was really great. It was really nice, but I didn't find Yeshua. Because in those days, not too many people, Jewish people believed in Yeshua. So I went traveling back home, then down to Mexico. And in Mexico, Mexico, I met Gen Mexican Christians. Awesome. And they, they found out I was Jewish. They said, oh, we believe in your Messiah. I'm Messiah. I'm Messiah. They said, Yeshua, Jesus. And I said, why is he my Messiah? He said, he's described in your Bible. Amen. My Bible? You mean the Old Testament? I, I kind of knew the Bible was the Old, the Old Testament was the Jewish Bible. Not that I ever read it, you know. But I knew stories from it, you know, from <laughs> Jewish school. And, uh, and they said, yeah, he's described in your Bible. I said, no, where? They said, Isaiah chapter 53. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes we are healed. And I said, no way. So he turns to it and he showed me right there. Yeah. I said, how come the rabbis never told us this? Mm -hmm. And sure enough, by their love and their example yeah. and the scriptures, I came to believe Yeshua was my yeah. Messiah. Yeah. And then I said, Baruch Abba, Bashem Adonai. Say, blessed be being Baruch Hashem. And then I knew I found my purpose in life. Because I was really aimless, going nowhere. But then God gave me a purpose. And what was it? To share the good news of the Messiah Amen. with my Jewish people. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and I tell you, uh, a revival pretty much started around that time. And so, getting a little off the track here. It's all right. But, it is, it you is. know, I just wanted to share just how God Amen. made me a Jew, born anew Amen. in the Messiah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is good. Well, when on the day of Pentecost, the Jewish people believed that the Torah was given on Mount Sinai, written on tablets. But the fulfillment of that, he said, God said, that the, I'm going to write the Torah on your heart. Yes. yes. And on the day of Pentecost, the fulfillment of that Jewish Shavuot Pentecost, he wrote the, the law in our hearts. And so that is fulfilled. The new covenant 
is written in our hearts, not just on tablets of stone. Hallelujah. And now we come to the next feast. It's called Rosh Hashanah. In Hebrew, the Feast of Trumpets. And that's in verse 23. And this is what he said. He said, again, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, on the first of the month, you shall have a rest, a Shabbat rest, a reminder by blowing out the shofars, a holy convocation. And so, what God, did God tell the people to do? He said, take the ram's horns to remember how I gave you a substitution for you. When Isaac was ready to be sacrificed as a sign of Abraham's faithfulness to God first. Who's to be first? Nobody else. Not even your own children. Amen. God is to be first. Amen. Amen. Right? We offer our children. But God was testing Abraham because he came from a place where people used to offer their children to sacrifice oh. in, in Ur of Chaldees. And so Abraham came from that. So he must have been a little influenced, you see. But he passed the test. And so God said, wait, Abraham. Don't kill your son. Don't sacrifice him. Look over there is a ram. That's your substitute. To remember my future substitute for you in Yeshua HaMashiach. Abraham knew that. It says in Hebrews that he could see yes. the Messiah by faith. So he understood. So he took that ram. And now, on the Feast of Trumpets, why do we blow ram's horns? To remember that substitute that God did for us in that day of Abraham and in the future fulfillment through the son of Abraham, Jesus, Yeshua, the fulfillment of that feast. And so... We blow the shofar on the day of trumpets. It's called Yom Yom Truah. It's the day of the sounding of the shofar. Truah is the sounding. We see it in many times in the Bible. And it's the day of, again, remembrance. All the feast days are to remind us, to remind us of God's covenant relationship with his people through Abraham and then through the Messiah. Amen. And so we blow the shofar. Feasts. The first 
three were fulfilled. The last four, the, the last, I'm sorry, the first of the letters, let me just make sure I got it, we got the last four, uh, we got uh, the first and then uh, Shavuot. So it's really, it's the first three are fulfilled. Then we have the next three, actually seven, when I say seven feasts, I'm, I'm using the Sabbath as one of the feasts, you know, the Sabbath was one of the feasts. Yeah, so it's really six and six. So the first three have been fulfilled, the next three are going to be fulfilled. And so, what? how do we fulfill the Feast of Trumpets? Yeshua is coming back. And what are we going to hear when he comes back? The trumpet. The trumpet. That's right. It's going to be the last trump. It says in Matthew 24, verse 30, it says that when, when he returns, he's going to return with a void, with the sound of the shofar. That's what, it's, that's what the translation is. And so, we're, are we going to be ready for that fulfillment? Yes. Amen. Amen. It says in Psalms, Blessed is he who hears that joyful sound. Truah is the word in Hebrew, which is for the Feast of Trumpets. And so, let's be ready when he comes. Now, the Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the Bible says it's to be a day of affliction. What does that mean in the Hebrew? It really means how do you afflict your souls? By fasting. fasting. That's right. And it's a day of fasting, Yom Kippur. It's a day of rest, of fasting. And what were the worshipers to do in the days of Israel? To take their best of their flock of lamb and bring it to the priest for a sacrifice. And the blood would be taken and put on the Ark of the Covenant. And then... God would accept it. But they had to come from their heart. If they just did it, just like that, God wouldn't accept it. It had to be from their heart. And so the worshiper would hope that God would accept it. They did it by faith. It would come. The, the forgiveness would come. And so what does this point to? What is the fulfillment? Yeshua. Yes. He was the day of atonement. Yes, he was, he yeah. was the covering for our sins. Amen. And so we don't need the Ark of the Covenant anymore. We don't need blood from an animal. Mm -hmm. He Thank took you care Lord. of that. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, he Glory. Is our, and you know, the Bible says that the books of life, the book of life is open. The book of life is open after Rosh Hashanah. And you've got 10 days to get right to Allah, right? to Yom Kippur. Because what happens on Yom Kippur? The book is closed. closed. We find in the scriptures talking about that. And so what do they hope? What did David say? He said, oh Lord, please may my name be written in your book of life. The names are all, the names start out being written in the book of life. The prayer is, don't blot my name out of the book of life. Right. Yes. You see? Because all everybody's names are in the book yes. of life. Amen. But it's up to us whether they remain in the book of life. Yes. And so, every worshiper, every Hebrew worshiper, would, when they offer the lamb, and they, they bring repentance 10 days before Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, they would pray that their names would remain in the book of life. Lord. So... The book is closed, but Yeshua kept our name. He keeps our name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise because the, Lord. the life is in the blood. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. So, by His blood, we have life. Yes. Eternal life. Yes. Hallelujah. Finally, Thank you. The, and that's also to be fulfilled. Because when He comes, He's going to He's the one who is the Lamb of God. Amen. And we're going to be saved and be with Him forever. Amen. And so the final feast to be fulfilled comes later on in the fall. Also comes four days after Yom Kippur, after the Day of Atonement. 
which is a solemn day, Yom Kippur, the day of atonement is a solemn day, comes the rejoicing, the feast of rejoicing, that our names are written in the book of life. Amen. It's called Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. Amen. Right? And what is the Feast of Tabernacles? Mm. Let's just read that in verse 34. It says, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month is the Feast of Booths, for seven days to the Lord. Okay, so what was this to remind the people of Israel? How God made dwellings for them in, in the desert for the 40 years Amen. that they were there. He had to build, he provided little booths for them so they could survive the harsh desert nights and the animals around there Amen. at night. And so that's, he said, when you come into the promised land, what are you to do every year at this time? Build a little booth and dwell in it for seven days to remember how I provided for you in the wilderness for 40 years. Amen. Yeah, Amen. And we do that, you know. When I was, when my kids were younger, we used to sleep in it. Now that, you know, they're older and I'm older, it's a little hard to sleep in it, you know, ground, but uh, we build it anyways and uh, we, we eat in it, we, we rejoice in it. And it's called in Hebrew also the Feast of Our Rejoicing, okay? And uh, Yeshua, it says that he tabernacled yeah. among us. Amen. Amen. And then in the end time, when he returns in the millennium, we're going to reign with him. Yes, we are. Yes. In the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. In the new Amen. Jerusalem. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. And, you know, he, he said on the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem, in John, what did he say in John? Chapter 7. Chapter 7. 37, he said, he said on the last day, the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles, he said, on the last day of the great day of the Feast of Tabernacles, he said, if any man is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. Now why did he say that? Because on the seventh day, they used to have a water pouring ceremony. They used to go, the priests used to go to the uh, river, of, the stream of Siloam outside the temple and gather in buckets and they used to come to the temple and have these big water pouring ceremonies as a thanksgiving for the rains. That's what they used to do on the last day of the feast. So what did Yeshua say on the last day? Because he celebrated it. He was yeah. there. He said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. For he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, yeah. out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He gives us the living Hallelujah. water. Hallelujah. He is the fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. So when his disciples heard Yeshua say that, when everybody was watching the water pouring, they understood that he is the fulfillment of the feasts, all the feasts Amen. of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. And what is the fulfillment also of this feast? In Zechariah, mm. he prophesied that in the millennium, all the nations Amen. will have to come to Jerusalem celebrate. to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. If not, no rain no will more. fall upon them. Yeah. Remember that rain that is needed in that land, or in those areas. And so, we're going to be sell all the nations are going to be celebrating the Feast of Sukkot. Now I want to get on to just touching about what we're in now. We're in the blood moons. Now what is a blood moon? A blood moon is caused when the earth comes in between the sun and the moon. And it causes a, an eclipse, a lunar eclipse on the moon. But not only that, it also gives a, a reddish color around the moon that makes it look like blood. And so blood moons are, you know, they're, whenever they come in fours, they're called the tetrad. And only certain times in the last 500 years, they came in fours. And they all fell, the four blood moons in one tetra oh. fell on the feasts of Israel. Oh. Yes. yes. That's right. 
So the first one had significance for Israel. In fact, all these tetrads were very significant to Israel and the Jewish people. When was, we had one in 1492, one tetrad. 1492, 1493, because it goes from one year to the next. And what happened? Christopher Columbus. Well, before Christopher Columbus, you see, Christopher Columbus was the blessing. You see, with every tetrad comes, um, I'd say a calamity, but then followed by a blessing. Amen. Amen. What was the calamity for Israel in the 1492-1493? The Spanish Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition was a terrible time for the Jewish people because many who were in that area of Spain and North Africa and, and uh, all that area of Middle East, okay, King Ferdinand and his, Queen Isabella decided to cause the Jewish people to convert. If not, they would die. And so there was a terrible persecution uh, on the Jewish people in that whole area over there. There were just terrible. And um, I just want to read you what happened here. The Spanish Inquisition was perhaps the most cynical plot in the dark history of Catholicism. It was aimed at expropriating the property of well-to-do Jews and converts in Spain, even if Jews converted by, uh, by um, ac accusation or converted by force, uh, they would convert, but they would secretly practice their Judaism. And if it was found out, they would be tortured. And many Jews were tortured to death. Um, and so they, uh, they, there was a blot and it was the Pope at that time, he agreed with that. And um, the Catholic Church just closed their eyes. Okay. And uh, many, many, in fact, many escaped. And they went to land that accepted the Jews. And one of the lands was the country of Turkey. That's where Haya, my wife's ancestors, came from. The Jews that ended up in Turkey. Because Turkey opened its doors at that time. And, and, and other countries, too certain like um, um, the Netherlands and uh, you know, Amsterdam and those places. But that was during the four blood moons, the Tetrad. And when did the first one fall? It was on the Feast of Passover, on April 2nd, 1492. And then also the second one was the Feast of Tabernacles mm. on September 25th, 1493. Then, then it ended with Passover, March 22nd, 1494, and then the feast, the fourth blood moon was the Feast of Tabernacles, September 15th, 1494. That's right. So Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles are very significant. Now, what was the redemptive value? Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, and that became a haven for the Jewish people. That was one of the places that they were accepted. Hallelujah. That's why America is blessed and has been blessed. As long as they stay with Israel and stand with Israel, we will be blessed. Okay? Now, when was the next tetrad? That had to do with the feasts, the feasts of Israel, for 1949 mm. and 1950. And what happened in 1949? Well, actually, it was 48. Started with 48, and then carried on to 49. Was the rebirth of Israel? Amen. Was the promise of the prophets that I will regather you a second time? Isaiah chapter 11, 12 says, "I will regather you a second time from exile." What was the first time in Babylon? Second time was from the four corners of the earth. And he fulfilled that in 1948. Okay, and it took 1948. But what happened? How did they really get stay there? Because in 1948, when the nations, the Arab nations around Israel, there were a multitude of Arab nations around Israel, they attacked Israel. As soon as the Jews started coming back, the, the war against them started. 
And we were outnumbered. We didn't even have weapons. We came to Israel with nothing, really, with shovels. And we were attacked. Could we have naturally won? No. No. God intervened. Amen. Hallelujah. God intervened. Let's the name of the Lord. Lord. Let's the name of the Lord. I wouldn't be here if that wouldn't have worked out. But we were spared by God's mercy because He keeps His word. Is God a faithful God? Yes, He is. He is faithful yes. to Israel. He is faithful to all those who are His today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are part of that here. And so, what happened? Well, that was the blessing, but I forgot to mention, well, I mentioned the curse before that. What was the calamity that brought about the birth of Israel, the rebirth of Israel? The Holocaust. Six million Jews perished just before that time. That's right. And we're a miracle. Do you know that Jewish people yeah. that we're alive today is a miracle of God? Yeah. Yeah. We should not in all rights be here because the devil hates the Jewish people. Why? Because God chose them to bring the good news to the nations. Amen. And the Messiah came from the Jewish people. Yeah. And so the devil, he got tricked. He didn't realize that God would fulfill his word and crush his head, you know, as it says in Genesis, to Adam and Eve. And so the devil has had a, really had a vendetta towards the Jewish people, has tried to wipe them out several times. I won't go through all the history of the different attempts, but like the Spanish Inquisition was one of them, and then the Holocaust was the next one. And again, the Tetra. The four blood moons was during those two times. But God saved his people in Israel. <coughs> now, when was the next tetra after that? The next tetra. What time do we have to tell Pastor? Just, Good. Good. All right. I just want to get through through the blood moons here. The next tetra was a very significant time for Israel. Jerusalem came back into the Israeli hands. What did Yeshua call Jerusalem? The city of God. Amen. The only place he mentions that there's a city of God, Yeshua, is about Jerusalem. It has a special place in God's heart. And when Israel, in 1948, got its territory, with the, when the war started and they were attacked, they were supposed to have Jerusalem. That was promised by the British. That was part of the territory that was supposed to be given to Israel in 1948. But because of that war, they lost some territory. And Jerusalem was one of those territories. And what was the cry of every Jewish person all over when they were dispersed? May we celebrate Passover next year in Jerusalem. That was the prayer of every Jew scattered the four corners of the earth for 2,000 years. My parents would say that when they were celebrating in Romania. Her parents in Turkey, wherever they were scattered, on the day of Passover, they would pray, God, we're in exile now. We're not even a people. We don't have a country, a language, a, a temple. We don't have a people. Oh, may we be able to celebrate this Passover next year in Yerushalayim. In 1967, when the next Tetrad happened, Jerusalem was brought back into Israel's hands, into the Jewish. But that was not an act of man. It had to be an act of God. Because why did this happen? In 1967, all the nations around Jerusalem, all the Arab nations around Jerusalem were ready to attack Israel and wipe them out and drive them into the sea. That was the call of those nations. And so, what happened? They defended themselves. Israel defended themselves. And in six days, they were able to defeat the multitude. They were outnumbered one to 20. And even the Israeli newspaper 
the secular Israeli newspaper wrote after the Six Day War that this must be an act of heaven. Amen. That they were able to defeat those multitudes of nations that came against them. This was an act of God. Yes. And again, this happened during the Petra. Teach. Now, brothers and sisters, the next Petra oh we are in. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What does this mean for Israel? I don't know. But it's been significant in the past. Yes. Iran. The deal, you've heard about the deal that we just yeah. gave them? Not very smart. Not very good. But Iran has vowed to wipe Israel off the map, if they could. I'm not saying that they're going to get it in the next few days, but I'm just saying Israel is ready for anything right now. They're a little bit stressed out. <laughs> because of this Stay deal amazed. that just happened. Yes. They have to trust in God. Yes. And so we need to pray for Israel. Yes. Amen. Because Amen. the Bible says to Abraham, God said, From you, Abraham, all the nations, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Yes. And those who bless you and your people will be blessed. Yes. But those who curse you will be cursed. And history has shown that those who have blessed Israel have been blessed. But those who have not, have not been blessed. Why is America has been the greatest nation in earth? Because they have received the Jewish people well. 